Years ago, we looked at our goals for Peter, and what we really want him is to live in the community as independently as possible. We want him to have a meaningful job that he enjoys doing. We want him to have friends um, that he can participate in leisure activities with and recreational activities. And um, essentially, you know, that could be a full life. And so in order to do that, you need to learn the skills to get along in the community. And those things absolutely cannot be taught in a self-contained class. They can't be taught in a group of people with disabilities because we don't live in a community where we are in a majority of people with disabilities. We have to interact with, for lack of a better word, regular people. Okay, let go of what I said, okay? Yeah. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good job, Peter. Give me five, Peter. Give me five. If you don't have a Will Hobbs book, and how many people is how many people still don't have a Will Hobbs book yet? Just for my okay. Then you're reading something else. I want you to be work. Thank you, Peter. I want you to be working on either reading... The big thing I think he's getting out of the, that classroom is the socialization, the routine, the being part of a group and fitting in. Now are there questions about the agenda for the day? Yo, sir. Most teachers are very accepting. But some are not. And I have been told that Peter does not belong here. Lunch. So I can hear it. Thanks. Work. What's <laughs> your Say it again. What's your That's right. We are this one? The people that are reading the novel Bronze Bow. It's heavy. He should be able to read better than he does. And he should be able to do a lot of um, the academic stuff better than he does because he really has the knowledge. And he should be able to do the skills. He hasn't been able to practice through on the skills. He has, he's had the behavior that interferes with his learning. And it's very easy for people to look at him and say, well, he has Down syndrome, and that's Down syndrome. But I don't think that's Down syndrome. Um, I think people with Down syndrome have a lot of different problems. Let's turn it a little bit this way. There you go. <coughs> Peter, that's the way it goes. No change, Okay. Picture needs to be out. Okay. Now put it over your head. But don't turn it. Over your head like this. There. Perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. That's cool. Okay. Put it under your collar and I'll tie it for you. Good. That's perfect. Great. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Okay. <laughs> Peter, let's put the tie on. <laughs> Peter. You need to have a tie on it. Either no, that, that do you want to leave your kerchief home? You can. No, I All right, you want me to tie it in a knot then? How are we going to fasten it? There's no slide. 
the slide we're out of. Let's go ahead. No, no, that, that. You have to fasten it. No. You have to fasten no. it. No. Then we're not going. Would you rather use a rubber band? We got a red one. You want to use a red one? Want to use this red one? No. Okay. No. All right, Peter, I have to help you. Where's the ah! Peter, stop. Ah! Peter, stop. I'm going to put this under your collar. No! All right, then stand back here, please, and put the tie, put no, the rubber band on. You have to put the rubber band on. You have to put it together. Stop! I knew this was going to be a problem without that slide. Peter, you're so predictable. When you have a child with a disability, you know, you, especially at first, everything that child does you feel like is a reflection on you. And you need to control that child's behavior. You need to be having them act right or, you know, you don't want them drawing his attention to himself. And then you send him off to school. And depending on the kind of programs he's in, a lot of times all you'll get every day is notes coming back saying, you know, Peter had a bad day. He had trouble with this. He had trouble with that. You don't hear anything good. And that's very hard to deal with because you've got absolutely no control over how Peter behaves at school. You get it? Nope. Uh, what's this in the way here? Look at that tongue. Get that in the way. Tongue head. Tongue head. Which farm you want to go to? Want to see the pigs or calves? <laughs> Which one? Pigs? Calves? Oh, okay. Okay. Goodbye. Now remember, stay in your seat, keep your hands to yourself, and use a quiet voice on the bus, okay? And keep your feet on the curb at the bus stop. Yes, so. The back of your shoes, okay? Have a great day. Bye. Stop there, that's the wrong curve. <clears throat> Peter, you need to wait over here. Come on, let me slip. I've got to miss extra. He has no way to express how he feels. That's the real problem. Um, and so it could come out in, you know, unwanted behavior or something like that, and we really wouldn't even know what's causing it. Is there anything else you want Mr. Asher to take to band this morning? What else would you like me to take? You don't want puzzles, right? Do you want puzzles to take? No. Do you want a game to take? No. And you don't want paper and pens? Do you want to stay here? Yes. You do? Did you have a bad morning on the bus? I think part of it too is the loneliness. Hey. Not being able to talk and, and tell people what he, what he would like or what he might be thinking. And I feel if that, um, the language will open up a little bit, that he might be less lonely. Hey. 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 Hey.
is so eager to do exactly what people want and he tries so hard and even when he's in a difficult period he tries very very hard and he can't do it and he's a failure and, and that causes behavior to escalate in the wrong direction please feel free to again browse through this book I will mark that poem like I do sometimes because I think maybe you might want to see it and I liked it originally because Poetry, he talks about why he wrote it. What was his image? Peter. And I think most writers kind of like to look back at where did they get the pieces that they wrote. Peter, you've got a choice. Take the paper out of your mouth. Sixth graders do not put paper in your mouth. Over here and get the paper out. I found in the back of this piece of book, of this book. What I wanted to talk about was um, what you were and Diane were talking about at the last meeting that we had a couple weeks ago. About uh, the mood swings uh -huh. we were saying. Yeah. Things really changed for Peter, and I'm going to be real blunt about what I'm seeing, is the impulsivity at times the shouting out, taking other children's things from them. He's going to physically grow, and it will be difficult to take something away from him that he refuses to give up. That really doesn't happen often, but it only has to happen a few times, and it scares people. Peter, no Pete. Pete. And my concern is that those kind of behaviors are the kinds of things that are going to make it harder and harder for him to be included as he gets older. I'm afraid that he will end up in some kinds of pull-out programs because of that. We're not leaving quite yet. You're not, you're not leaving yet. You go back in your seat until the announcements come on. You go back and sit in your seat. Somehow I was hoping the problem would go away. And I knew it wouldn't. But as long as, you know, nobody else said anything, I thought, well, it's just me. No, Peter, don't throw it. Don't throw it. Lay it on my tray. No. This is mine. No. Peter, this is mine. You need to give this to me. No. Peter, it's mine. No. Don't get him. Get back, Peter. Hey, Pete. Peter, please give me my bread. my apple. Can I have it? Please, Peter, please give him my bread, please. No, please.
Hey, you ready to go to school? You ready to go? You ready to go? Good morning. You gonna shake my hand? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? How do we do this? Good morning. How are you? I'm up here. How are you? Okay, I'll see you at your locker. See you at your locker. Peter, I'll see you at your locker. Look up at me. I'm up here. See you at your locker? Yeah. Okay, see ya. You can tie your shoe up there. What's A equal to, guys? Four. Thank you. Four plus C. What's C equal to? Negative three. Negative three. Anybody have any questions on any of the homework that we didn't go over? Yes, no, maybe? Everybody's comfortable with the homework or you know where you made a mistake? Because we're moving on. What do you do first? Change. Good. What's this number right here? Six. Six. What's that number right there? What's the next number? Good. What's the answer? Twelve. Good. Can you write twelve? You did good, Pete. You get an A. How's that? doesn't need 100% of his day spent at school. And I think, uh, actually, he will be 15 before the end of the school year. And I think that it's time that we start looking at um, reasonable expectations of some sort of job he could do in the community. Do you want to get ahead and get the big trash can? Yeah, you remember how to wheel that one? And then we'll go around and try and empty all the trash cans. What do you think? Okay. Keep going straight. Keep going straight. No, Peter. Peter. You're going straight. Come on over here. Come over here. We go straight ahead. Look at this. Look, there's stuff there, there's stuff here. We don't want to go into it, we want to go around it, right? You did, yeah. Okay then, can you do it then? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Cause and I'm up here. Right here. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You have to keep eye contact. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Good. Now, it's all you. Be careful. Freedom without doubt and care without cause. I give you this and more. I am peace. I am love. I am the dreamer. I see above me the snow-covered mountains, majestic, proud, and high. If like a free bird I could reach their peaks, maybe from there the world will hear my cry. 
Why? That is a poem that's directly about the main character. Any questions about my expectations of what I want you to take back to the group? None? Okay. Notebook's open. It's time to talk about term papers. And she's got an initial this right here stating that this has been addressed too. What else in terms of accommodations that anybody can think of? These are things that the teachers are doing for him and that the school is doing that we wouldn't necessarily do. Uh, these classes all included classes that we're talking about, these keyboarding classes and team leaving and things yes. like that? Yes, yes they are. So right. are there any pull out classes at all that, he, that he's in? When no. I mean pull out classes like some type of functional academic class that no. he takes? No, none, none whatsoever. <clears throat> those, are, those are all done within the, within the regular classroom. So does he move independently from class to class or do we need to make sure that there's a support person from him moving from period one to period two? I really think he needs someone there with him. He can I do mean, it. I mean, he'll move. <coughs> you know, I mean, he likes to... He is kind of slow. Are we going to make an accommodation to be to class on time? He's going to be allowed a certain amount of... Do we have to get that specific right now or He's, wait on... He will be taken care of. He will be getting to <coughs> class A to class B. He won't get lost. He will be given, provided the extra time but without being three tardies and you get ISS and all that type of rigmarole. To me, it's very, very important that he arrive at class on time. I agree. Not because he's not going to get there, but because it's a functional skill he has to have to go to work and every other thing he I does. Agree about all of that. So, yeah. you know, if we need to think of some strategies to do that, one of the things that Wayne Zellers was talking about is, you know, he was making very sure that I knew Peter would be protected and he wouldn't be hurt and he'd be taken care of. Well, I don't want Peter being taken care of. Um, I want Peter taking care of himself. You're going to come off the buses through that door there, and you're going to come right here. Can you do that? You know where this is? All right. And they'll show you on Monday, too, but this is your locker. Okay? notebooks and go ahead and get out the textbook and open up to that chapter on the animal nutrition. What kind of cow is this? It's a Holstein cow. It's a very dusty Holstein cow. It lives in my apartment. Uh, okay, what can you tell me about this cow? What is that? Stomach. Where's your stomach? Over here. Right. You have one stomach. Right? Right. cow has four. How many does a cow have? Cow. A cow has what? How many stomachs? Up here. Four. four. A cow has four stomachs. <laughs> Which animal is closest to your digestive system? Or the larger animal? Pig. The pig. Okay. The pig and you have the same digestive system pretty much. A horse is very close to you. The next animal that's close to you is a horse. 
What are we going to go clean? Yeah. What? Sure. Bucks. My role is to try to make this gradual change from school to work as an adult for Pete so that when he leaves school that there's a work site in which Pete has been performing at, been trained at that work site, and that he has expressed a real, a real interest in. Okay, sweep it on down towards the front. Oh, yeah, these windows down too, don't we? Okay, look over here. Get that for me. Go ahead. Good job, Pete. Here you go. Wait a minute. I get it. Thank you, bud. What do you say, Pete? My turn. Atta boy. And say, I see you when? Tomorrow? Talk to him. See you tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm very disappointed in how Peter's spoken language has progressed. And I know, I know that it's, it's his, mo his most significant disability, honestly. Okay, ready? We're going to start with our puck or smile. Do you remember how to do that? Remember, you got to stick your lips out. And smile. He turned out he couldn't hear the first year, which was very unfortunate, but we really didn't know that. He'd had so much problem with ear infections. And his hearing is normal now, but I really believe that the fact that his hearing was so poor when he was little, and the fact that he was in a non-speaking class, he was in a, for four years, he was in a class where the children really didn't speak. Count with me. One, One two, two, three, four, four five. five. Okay. Who's in our family? Do you remember? All the members of your family. Who is there? There's. Who are you? What's your name? Pete. Pete. Guasdaskis. Good job. Pete Guasdaskis. Okay, tell me in a sentence. My uh, name is Was Pete. Pete. Was Dallas Tis. Give me five. Good job. Good for you. All right. <laughs> I know it shouldn't be, should it? But it doesn't give it to me the other times. Did I do good? Did you see that? I got a strike. I needed a strike. Hey! Hey, Chris, how are you? <laughs> how are you? I saw you. I, I saw him. I was like, what? what's going on here? Yeah. You know, I was like, what are you doing here? Pete. So you're with the track team again, huh? Yeah, we're all down there. Did you see us? Hey, Pete. How are you? I'm fine. You got those sporty new glasses on? Are you bowling? Are you bowling? Yeah. Tell you Chris are? you got a 94. No way. Are you serious? Yeah. You can bowl like that? Of course you can. I Let taught him. Let me see. Are you a good bowler? I got a strike Not going today. on down here. That's all I've got so far. One strike. Go ahead, Pete. Let me see, Pete. Let me see. Give him, show him a strike here. He's really funny. He comes up and he says, I need a strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We all Or I got robbed. All right. Let's see it. Wow. That's good. All right! Yeah. <laughs> that one was for Chris. All right! Way to go! Look at you! You're awesome! What's your name? Pete. 
I'm Sally, and we're going to draw some blood on you today. We're still working a little bit, not really in the dark, about what's going on with Peter. Um, the psychiatrist is sure he's suffering from some kind of depression. Remember the needle? Little one, you hold real still for me, okay? I got an itty bitty little baby needle there. There we go. Oh, Good job. I'm but he's sorry, also honey. being treated for there attention deficit disorder hyperactivity. I know it and he has thyroid problems. He's so he's on a lot of medications. It's a real balancing act. Some of the medications can cause heart irregularities, and some make him very drowsy. Because I know that hurts your arm there. Come back and play tomorrow. Peter, unhook your legs. Peter. Peter you want to come back and legs. play tomorrow? If you want to come back and play tomorrow, you need to get down. If not, we're not going to be able to come back. Please, let go. Okay, come on down. Please, let go. Okay. Let go. Hang on, Peter. You gotta hang on. Let go. Go. Yeah, right. Go ahead. We got you. Just let your legs down. Okay? You got a hold? Put your legs down. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Here. Don't forget your bag. Right there. Okay. Set your bag down and you're going to start to work. What do you do with this, Pete? Now, nah, where do these go? that long. No, don't do that. Come on, turn around here. Sit quietly right there. Let's wait for our towels to dry. Just leave the door. This is too hot in the room. Oh, no, 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 no. No, wait for the clothes to dry. Come on, stand right over here. You're not going to get to finish your work. Whip. Yep, you've got an hour left today. You're going to have to go to ISS for the last hour. You want to do that? Yeah. No, you don't, right? So you're going to sit here quietly, or we're going to ISS. Okay. All right, Peter, here's your bag. Let's go. Let's go upstairs. Here you go. in uh, stall three, back around the corner. And I want 
Wimbledon. Yeah, it's just Wimbledon. Just Wimbledon. Just Wimbledon. Just Wimbledon. But you went through what he did and why he's up here and told him? Oh, he knew. I gave him five or six warnings. I said, Peter, if you don't stop that, we're going to have to go to the ISS. Okay. And did he come up here willingly? Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, again on the way in. Okay, great. All right. Did you have a good day today? Peter, did you have a good day today? Yeah. Okay, you want to, you want to go ahead and come in? Sure. Did you have fun? Yeah, fun. Peter, we're here today to talk about your future, what you want to do in the future, and some of the things that you'd like to get accomplished as you become a young adult. We um, want to increase yeah. Peter's relationships with, um, with his peers and increase the socialization and some of the activities that he does. And so what we do is we get together like people that are interested in, in Pete and his future. So what would be the ultimate? What it is, Peter, what is it, Peter, that you want to do in the future? And Mom, I know you share Pete's dreams. I know Pete would like to be having a job working with other people. Okay. Maybe going to dinner or going to a movie or mm -hmm. want to shoot hoops or something like that. Just hanging out with the guys. He's no. social. He's yeah, socially, socially alone. alone. He's yes. physically with socially other people, alone. but he's socially not with other There's people. not nearly enough of the time being spent really, really connected to other people. How many times has, has, has a teenager picked Pete up to say we're going to a ball game? Okay, has that's... Has that happened to you? Well, it used to happen when his brothers and sisters yeah. were home. But now he's, he's the only one in right. high school. Right, yeah. so um, no teenagers fast. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know what he does at the high school, I'm out of touch, but... <clears throat> You know, but I know from when I was with Pete, and I can only talk from the past. It's hard, you know, being a kid, and and, and I'm going to come out and say it, you know, it's, you know, Pete's different, and I think kids notice that more at this age, and they're not going to want to be forced to go, well, I don't want to hang out with Pete tonight, you know, or I don't want to do that. Pete. Your alarm clock is ringing. Pete, you need to get up and turn it off. There's your clock ringing. Actually, it's been very stressful um, with all the things we've had to do with Pete, all the meetings and planning and everything because he has a disability. And what has happened um, is that now Pete's 18, he's turned into an adult, and we're looking at another, I don't know how many years, of still having to arrange for things, plan for things. Are you going to work today? Yeah. You gonna take the bus? Sure. Pete, why don't you tie him and I'll help you tuck him in, okay? I gotta be hitting the road. He's had speech therapy for He's had speech therapy actually for about 18, 19, or it can't be 19 years, probably 17, 16, 17 years. Um, we've been working on him and how to learn to do all the tasks that you do, the activities of daily living, um, and he can't do them without supervision. All right, there you go. We've done all this, and Pete is still very disabled. 
we have to keep doing this for another, I mean, more than 18 years, maybe the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how to tie them the way you tie them. All right, now you do the other one and I'll help you tuck it in, okay? Can you do that? There, you do that one and I'll help you tuck it in. Pete, just do it, okay? There you go. Pete! Give me five. Have a good day, okay? Mm. See you guys later. Remember, we got a bike ride this afternoon, okay? Can be ready for that? Mm -hmm. All right. Have fun with Chris. Chris, be good. Have a nice day. Yep. BJ says there are lots of things we can do to be safe near the street. That's right, baby Bob. First, we should remember to cross at the corner. And always look both ways, then look both ways again, and then cross the street. And hold a grown-up hand. Okay, Pete, coming to a corner. Stop right here. Remember what we do? Look right. Is your car coming? Nine. Look left. Sure. Is it clear? Nope. Yeah? Is there a car coming, Pete? Yeah. There is? Are you sure? Look again. Is there a car coming? Yeah. Now look right. There are no cars coming, okay? And see, here comes a car right here. So we can't go until that car passes. Okay? Now it's clear. See? Let's go. No cars coming. Things are really progressing a lot slower than uh, than uh, what we, we thought would, would happen. You're always, uh, I think, optimistic that uh, you're gonna beat all the odds and, and, uh, and your, your kid's gonna do a whole lot better than, than what the books say. We say Pete. I said thank you. Cool. Okay, Pete, there's a the theater, so you better pull it. Pete, pull the lawn, okay? Pull it. Pull it. There you go. Now let go. Good job, Pete. You know, Frank Good looks job. at it one way that we've done all this and Pete is still very disabled. And it's a shock because somehow you think 18 years from now when he's grown up, things are going to be different. And actually, Pete is very, very different from the child he was at six years old. But it's still constant supervision. Okay, Pete, remember we're looking for Cindy Acres, okay? And we're supposed to stop at the front desk and ask for her. Are you gonna open the door for me and be a gentleman? Yes. Good. You've changed a lot. Not a little boy anymore. Oh, thank you. You're a young man now. Yeah. Yes, you mm -hmm. are. The reason we're here today is your mom called and she wanted to talk about maybe some services and supports for you when you get out of school. Is Peter going to continue school through the age of 21? Yes. <clears throat> in fact, good. probably 22. Good. His birthday's in May. Oh, so. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Academically, is what's, what's the goal there? Um... Well, the goal is to, uh, really to increase his um, speech mm -hmm. um, as much as possible. In terms of future plans for Peter, what would you like to see? Well, we'd like to see him employed, mm -hmm. and I, I would hope at least five hours a day. You know, full time might not be, he's, you know, gets tired easily. The services that we have available are changing so much and have changed so much in the last couple of years that I have no idea what our services are going to look like for Peter when he's finished with school. 
those services are so expensive that we can only provide those to people who have Medicaid when we have enough match money available within our own budget. One of the things that, that we can certainly do, I don't know, has Peter applied for Medicaid? No, is he Medicaid? no. Um, I don't understand about Medicaid waivers. <laughs> I'm not sure if I understand it well enough either. When a person with a disability enters into the adult system, it's very confusing. Um, first, he needs to become eligible for SSI before he can apply for Medicaid. Uh, you apply for Social um, Security or what? Or um, SSI? That's mm -hmm. Supplemental Social Security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and what is the criteria for getting that? Um, just really, just any type of disability. If a person is declared disabled by the Social Security Administration, he'll be eligible for SSI. Um, and with the SSI automatically comes the Medicaid. The current requirements are um, IQ of 59 or below is automatically based just on the, the mental retardation alone. We don't really have any accurate, what I, what I consider accurate IQ scores, um, but I know it's below 59. Before we had had him evaluated up at UVA, because nobody could decide what a placement form would be because his behavior was so difficult. And they had said that by the time he was eight or nine, when he got bigger, that he would have to be institutionalized, that his behavior was so bad because he just was totally unmotivated in special ed classes. It was awful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just putting him in a regular class with a reason to behave and role models, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just it's unbelievable, the difference. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that he can go ahead and get SSI at this time, and Medicaid as well. Is that not based on family income? or? It depends on how you file it. So should I call you and make an appointment? or? <laughs> well, we can talk further. Here's my card. We've probably had three other meetings. And when you talk to them, um, everything sounds pretty clear until you actually get to the point, well, what do I do next? or what happens next. And then it's, well, it's another meeting. Use your brakes. Use your brakes, bud. That away. Doing great. Doing great. Pedal, pedal. Doing great. Watch where you're going, bud. Bend the road. Stop, 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 stop. Here comes the car. Stop. Good job. Okay, go across. Okay, follow. Tell me how many dollars you have. Um, two. two. Let's count. Count all of them. Three. Four. Five. This one's six. Seven. Eight. Eight. Is this eight? Okay. Now, how many dollars do you need for lunch? One. Just one? One. Two dollars. Two dollars. Okay, I want you to get out two dollars. Pretend I'm the lunch lady, okay?
I think Pete feels a sense of responsibility, a sense of self-confidence. He knows he's allowed to do work independently. He's allowed to show his ability to perform tasks that need to be performed. You might not talk a lot, but he understands everything you say to him. So, I mean, if you ask him to do something, he'll do it. Now, it's pretty helpful. You know, there's people out there that are more capable than him don't do anything, you know? Initially, at the beginning of the year, I had to spend my whole hour and a half with Pete, but now that he's gotten himself engaged in working with the kitchen, it seems to be uh, that I'm able to now just make sure that Pete arrives on time, that he's staying on task, and I come back to make sure that he gets on the bus. Bud. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Do you like roller coasters? Oh, well, yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good. Do it again, do it again. <laughs> if you want. Anne Marie. Yeah. Stephanie Elvie. Yeah. Robert. Peter. Peter. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Jennifer Link. Yeah. Roger Lincoln. Yeah. Okay, he knows you're here, so you There's only one roll. Have fun! Yeah! <laughs> I couldn't do that. Are you gonna ride a roller coaster with me? Put your hands up like this. Like that. And say, woo! Can you do that? And scream really, really loud. <laughs> oh, you can. I think he's a little nervous. I think he's nervous, but he's gonna enjoy it. He wants to do it. He wants to be a big man. Now sit back, relax. Enjoy the night's own air time. You want to turn the lights on? Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? When I first met him, Pete really didn't say much. And sometimes Pete still doesn't say much, but um, he's gotten really comfortable with me now. I can kind of, since I've gotten to know him, read his body language, I guess, which is how I understand him. Most girls with that song, they go around the guy. Yeah. What a girl wants, what a girl needs. All right, here we go. What a girl wants, what a girl needs, what a girl makes me happy and sets you free. I'm thanking you for knowing exactly what a girl wants, what a girl Awesome. Give me five, Bucko. Two. Come on. Come on, Pete. Let's go. I can't pull you. You gotta get up. I can't pull you. Here. 
One, two, three, up. I can't pull you. Here, pull out of my finger and get up. Peter? So how are you today, Peter? Yeah. Doing all right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Who is this lady? Is that your friend or is that your mom? Um. Mom, that's right. Now, tell me that you are taking your medications, right? Peter, those pills, you take the pill? Yeah, pill, that's right. Are you sleeping all right? Yeah. Okay. And are you eating okay? Yeah. All right. Do you have any problem? Tell me if you have any questions or any problem. I got a list. Okay. Um, we had the problem with the amipramine level being too high. And it was in the toxic level, you said. Mm -hmm. And so we cut his amipramine in half. Uh-huh. And... Please, uh, please, uh, are you burping pizza when you cough? Pizza. I bet you are. <laughs> it's like any pizza I eat. I bet you you are. Peter, are you? You look like you're in good mood today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see that big smile. That's nice. He acted spaced out. Um, he's been coming home off the bus gets off at the bottom of our street, and he's been getting off since fifth grade and coming into the house. Mm hmm and one day he just forgot how to come into the house and he ended up standing right at the corner of the street in the driveway. Oh, okay. And um, he did a lot of sitting just doing nothing. And he was talking to himself and telling himself to shut up and stuff. Um, and just generally he's becoming more dependent. But he also, well, even when he comes in the kitchen, he's got to keep ringing that doorbell and opening the door and closing it and opening and closing it. Is this something more lately? Yes. Along with this old regression that right. we're seeing? This came with the regression. Okay. And it also, but it hasn't gotten any better. If anything, it's, he's doing it with more things. The best way I can describe to you, if I can help you, see what happens that all these diseases are something like that. Say, for example, originally we saw, when we saw, if these were the symptoms that he came with, that we call it as depression, okay? We call this depression, but these other symptoms, right now, if you are seeing these compulsive symptoms, and they can overlap. Now, he could be somewhere in the middle here, where there's part of depression and part of compulsion. Now, imipramine is definitely helpful for depression part, but not so much so for compulsion. And that's why it's, it's a decision time again. We have to find the right medication for him. And if once we find that right, whether it is with these new medications, whether this old medication and another added, and that will make you all feel better oh, too. Oh, yeah. What does the recipe call for? What is this? Okay. Okay, go get the eggs. Robert? Yeah? You're gonna need a bowl. Can you be getting the bowl? Sure. Jessica, I'm waiting for you. The eggs are up there. Where's the eggs? Here. Put the eggs. Here. Well, also use that one. Let's use the one along this line right here. Can you open that? Open that for me. Get the brownies. Go ahead. Eat it. We're going to eat them. We've got to cook them first. Oven. The brownies. 315. Can you do that? Take it out of the oven. Take it out of the pan, Lisa. Four. Five. Keep going. Robert, take it out. Yeah. Well, she take the brownie out. Oil. One fourth cup Power of oil. Mm -hmm. That's the best part about the whole thing. I don't say. Where's the one fourth line? Is it there? Mm. Is it there? Mm. Is it there? It's her, one fourth. It's her. Point to it. Saw. That's it's exactly a, right. It's her, Do you get it? It's her. Yeah, right. It's her, Nisa. 
filling. It it's chocolate, really. Keep that one. Peter, stop. No. Oops. A little bit much, Pete. A little bit much. Hold on. I think it needs a little razor. Oh. He's got a bit of a razor bone. You got a razor burn? Where? It's like cut himself too. Did you do this? Did you shave yourself? Pete, I think you should grow it out for prom, you know? Eric, I like tomorrow. You ready for Today. prom? Yeah. What are you up to tonight? No? Um, yeah. I'll be ready. Maybe so. Look at it. He's born ready for the lady. Let's go, guys. <laughs> We doing that Welcome to tonight's soccer match between Christiansburg High School and Blacksburg High School. Let us turn your season home. You guys ready? What? Get them up! Get them up! Who? Who? Get them up! Get them up! What? What? Get them up! Get them up! Who? Who? Oh! He gains acceptance here because in the school he's seen as different. Walking down the hallway, you just know he's different from everybody else. But on the soccer team, he's treated just like everybody else. And I think in some way he realizes that and responds to that. The soccer team for Peter was really, really good for him. And it gave him a sense of friendship with a lot of people that maybe he wouldn't have had. And I think it's a great thing that he got to be our manager for him and for us both. I think that he'll definitely remember us and the team and how much fun it was. When they go on the field, they're, they're so committed that uh, when they come off the field, you wonder if, that's, if there's more to their life than soccer. And uh, Peter makes you aware that they understand there's bigger issues involved than, than just that. What are you going to say, Peter? Come on. Be here, buddy. What are you going to say? Yes. Dance. Can you say it a little louder? Yeah. Say it a little louder. Bye, yes. Bye, and what are you going to say? Here, sure. Now come over here to the dance floor. Okay. Take oh. your hand, Peter. We're dancing, Peter. Take your hand. Okay. Come on, hand. Come on, here. Now, yeah. where do you put your arms, Peter? Oh. Like no. this. Round a race. Round a race. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. Put your no, hand No, here we go like this. Okay, because she's taller than you are. All right. Ready?
Okay, give, for it, give me a hot dog. Okay, we can do that. Give me a spot back. Let's do six to eight, dude. Let's do six to eight. Pete, oh, yeah, baby. Pete your spot, Pete. Sorry, coach. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> oh, first bite's the best. <laughs> hey, did you get your tux? Tux. <laughs> the prom? Uh, yeah, baby. Are you ready? Who's your lady, Pete? Um... Pete, Did you get your that, tux? Who are you going with? Tux. Who are you going with? Tux. Until the last couple of years, I never thought he would go to the prom. Oh, that's pretty. You just need so many social skills to be able to go out in the evening, you know, have a date, um, and and behave appropriately. It's just for a long time, you know, we didn't think we could do that. with Jessica? Of course Pete, don't be embarrassed. We know. You were. You were getting down. Pete. You were getting down with Jessica. He knows, he knows he was dancing with him. It's all right. Pete's definitely got a different future than me or anyone else on this on our team, but yeah, Pierre. I still think for Peter it can be a successful future and he can, you know, have fun living. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got a lot of Gene over here. Yeah, we got a Pete to walk across the stage with us because he's grown up with all those people. He's been a part of our entire class and this is the year that he needs to be included with all of us. Cody Nicole Barker. <laughs> Elizabeth May Barnett. Nina Victoria Grubb. Peter Edward Gwazdowskis. Take this to Mr. Fitz. Take it to Mr. Fitz. Congratulations,
Have a good day. Yeah. All right. Be good. Have fun.